Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and have you ever found yourself wanting to do pre-rendered cutscenes for your Unity game, or in fact wanted to not make a game at all, but instead maybe a film using your Unity project? Well, a plugin just released for Unity just yesterday that might be absolutely perfect for you, and that is Octane Render for Unity, or Octane Render for Unity, technically. Uh, now, Octane Render has been around for a couple of years now. What it is is basically a standalone GPU-powered renderer. Uh, it's made available from a company called Otoy, I'm going to guess is how it's actually said. And this is not new by any means. It's just new for Unity. It's actually been available for just about every 3D application that has ever been made. So you can get it as a plugin renderer for, say, uh, AutoCAD, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, uh, Houdini, Lightwave, Moto, Nuke, um, you name it, basically. Uh, if it had the ability to have a renderer added to it, there is a plugin for the... Um, Octane Renderer, and today Unity got one. And this actually makes sense because game engines are getting more and more cinematic tools. So, you know, compositing your world together, animating things, creating animated timelines, etc., has just become, um, you know, more and more of a feature. Both Unity and Unreal Engine are really adding cinematics control stuff to it. In Unity's case, I believe they called it, yeah, it's Timeline, and it allows you to do much more advanced cutscenes. So actually doing film production directly in your game engine, using all your game assets in the first place, really is starting to make a whole lot more sense. Not to mention, you know, um, cartoons and such that we've been seeing for years, starting going back to such as Reboot, these are basically perfectly created in something like a game engine. So if you're going to integrate a game engine into your pipeline, um, Octane Renderer may actually be the perfect thing for you. Also, if you're creating a VR movie experience in 3D or, again, a game cutscene, and you want to have just a higher fidelity rendering results than what you normally get, again, Octane Renderer may be right for you. And this is an example. You saw it in the background of what I showed earlier. Uh, but this is an example of something that I rendered directly within Unity. We'll look at how it works in Unity in a second. Now, going back, let's talk quickly about the price. It's subscription-based, and the cool thing is, first off, there is a free tier available. Uh, basically, it limits you to one GPU, um, and it's free to all Unity developers. So that is exactly what I am looking at today. Now, if you go on top of that, if you want up to two GPUs, you go up to this uh, studio for Unity. It also gives you the After Effects and um, Octane Render for Nuke plugins, plus one additional licenses for a selection of Octane Render plugins. Again, we saw all those various different options there, as well as the Octane Render Cloud for if your hardware sucks like mine does, you can render it off in their cloud. And then the next tier up, so that was 20 bucks a month, the next tier up is $60 a month and basically gets you up to 20 GPUs. So if you have a monster rendering machine, that one works great for you. And I got a feeling in the video they showed of them using it, they have more towards the 20 GPUs because me and my single GPU, we're looking at about seven minutes of frame to render. So. Having a bunch more GPUs is definitely going to make things faster. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm running on a 970M uh, mobile GPU with only 3 gigs of RAM. So if you're looking and you've got uh, a 1080 uh, Ti with you know loads and loads of RAM, you're probably going to see a lot better performance than what I actually got. And I'm not going to actually show you a render uh, because I learned to my chagrin that it does not really play well with my computer and video capturing all at once. And this is actually my second take of this video because this is a pretty intensive thing to do. All right, so without further ado, how does it work? Well, first off, you need to install it. The installation process is a little weird, but it's not that bad. Basically, there are a couple of scenes available on the Unity Asset Store. Um, <coughs> this one is the lightest weight one, and the one I'm using in this example. Just basically download it. So go into Unity, create a new project, go to the Asset Store, search for Octane Render, grab one of the example scenes, and it will all automatically install all the stuff you need. And then you head on over to Unity, it creates a new menu called Octane, and by default it will probably have just one option, Settings, go to Settings, and click um, Load Octane. I have Unload there because I've already actually done it. And this is a step that you might have to repeat a couple of times until you're finished. Now at this point now with that menu, you can add new and exist add Octane support to existing scenes or your own libraries. Once the tools are actually installed, you can go ahead and reuse it wherever you want. But in this particular case, we have um, a sample project to work with. So let's go take a look at exactly what happens here. Now one of the key things you're going to want to do is create a PBR render target. Just click that button. And then if you go into your hierarchy, da, 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 you will see it created a PBR render target. And over here in Inspector, you can see said PBR render target. 
And this is where your various different camera settings are. This is where you control how things are rendered. And you can see there are a ton of settings here. First and foremost, probably most important, you have to go ahead and select the camera for it to use. And this is standard Unity camera. And you've got <coughs> a whole lot of uh, settings that you can go ahead and set on that particular guy. Um, you do settings on the environment, your film settings, animation settings, uh, kernel setting, render layer, render passes. Um, you can, you got so much fine deal control over the renderer available right here, way beyond what I can get into too. Uh, just do be aware, and then you've got post-processing effects available down here. You can do things like uh, bloom and glares, blurs, etc. Not covering all that. Just know if you've ever used a traditional renderer, your render settings are available in here and they are very, very, very well defined. Now, another key thing that you go up to the Octane menu, you will find you have um, the uh, d -d 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 recorder. And that is this guy right here. And this is basically where you say, go ahead and make the render. Um, you can, this will render out to the viewport, which again, I am not going to do, but basically think of the viewport as your render result. Now, when you're rendering, you've got a couple different options here. You can render out, um, here we see 16 bit PNG. I, I rendered an example, I'll show you the end result. Um, or you can do EXR. Another option you have is their own intermediate format. Well, actually, I don't know if it's theirs, but uh, they support it, ORBX. Um, so you can export it out to there and render in a different, like one of their other packages or another product that supports ORBX. And as you can see, they've made it so that you can import and export OBX, ORBX from Unity. So it gives you kind of a transitional uh, file format for rendering of your scene. Um, in other programs. Now you've got the option of how to render it. You can do manual, which basically will keep rendering frames until you stop it. Uh, single frame or intervals based on time or frame count. And I'm just gonna do single, well, I just did a single frame. Um, you've also got control over how it's named, basically using these different macros. So you can put the um, project name, the resolution, the current frame, etc., in the file name that it generates. Um, <coughs> and that's about it. And then when you're ready to render, just go ahead and click render, start, and boom, off it goes. As I mentioned earlier, on my 970M uh, mobile GPU, it took about seven minutes to render that frame. So um, not the fastest thing in the world, but ultimately rendering rarely is a fast process. If you've ever done a cycles render with the number of rays set to, you know, 500 or 400 or 300, you got an idea how long this stuff takes. And you'll actually find that uh, Octane Render is actually quite fast. The whole GPU powered aspect of it is one of its big selling points. Now I did a quick render with the default settings to a 16-bit PNG file and the uh, result is this. So you can see it it's beautiful. The end results are beautiful. That's what that scene actually renders out to, or at least a frame of that scene renders out to this quality. So you're gonna get a better visual quality than you do obviously from the real-time renderer because that's just the nature of when you have seven minutes to calculate a frame as opposed to 1 60th of a second, you're gonna get better results. And in a nutshell, that is it. That is what Octane Render is. There is a now, obviously, this plugin available for uh, Unity. And if you want to dabble in it, again, the base version is just limited to one GPU. But if you've got all the patience in the world, uh, it's, it's a free product. And if you want more frames uh, or more GPUs, obviously, you've got to pay either $20 or $60 a month, which both actually seem quite reasonable to me. So that's it for now. I don't know how many people are doing, you know, uh, rendered animations in these day and age, maybe for, you know, uh, again, your cutscenes. And again, I guess less people are doing cutscenes these days. But if you want that really good high fidelity or you're creating other kinds of media such as, you know, an animated short, this could be a great tool for you. Um, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do, of course, click that like button. And we cover all kinds of game development stuff and I guess kind of on the edge of film related stuff today. Um, and if that sounds interesting to you and you're not already subscribed, do consider subscribing. I will see you all later. Goodbye.